cool. Hey everyone, it's Devin here again with the Make Anything channel, and I'm very excited for today's episode. So you might have realized that a lot of the things I print are related to my own life and my own hobbies. And why wouldn't they be? You know, 3D printing is great for customizing your own life. But there's one passion of mine that I haven't touched on yet, and it's one of the biggest parts of my life, and that's music. In fact, one of the very first projects I worked on at Art Center was a guitar. Well, this guitar to be specific. I call this the body snatcher, uh, because it's every part of a guitar except for the acoustic body, which is what amplifies the noise. And the idea behind this is that it lets you, first of all, carry around a very compact guitar, and it also just lets you use all kinds of different containers to play music. So basically it's got three spikes here and you can just stab it through any cardboard box or you could uh, connect it to some kind of metal tin or plastic boxes and get different kinds of sounds. Some of the first bodies I made for this were made out of foam core, which is basically what like you post science projects on in elementary school, that backing board. Um, but it actually worked really well, so you connect it here, there's a flap in the back, and then you just tighten the screws on the back to hold it on. And it plays music. So this is one of my more interesting shaped ones, and then I also have this traditional one, which I really loved. I used this for a long time. But one of the things I've wanted to do for the longest time was 3D print a body for this guitar, naturally. Um, when I made this, I didn't even have a 3D printer yet. But after years of dreaming and months of working on and off, I finally have done it. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys today. The completion of my 3D printed guitar body for the Body Snatcher. It's gonna be awesome! Let's check it out! So to build a guitar body around what I already have, the first thing I have to do is get the dimensions into the computer. And since this was just made by hand, I figured the easiest thing would be to physically trace out my guitar. So I just stuck paper against the back and then used the edge of this china marker to find the edges of my guitar. The paper is a bit flimsy, so in hindsight, I should have used foam core or something more stiff. But in any case, I got a decent reference that I scanned into my computer, and then I brought it into Illustrator. So I used that and also a reference image of another guitar body to base my own guitar off of. And then I just used the pen tool and outlined everything and created my own design for the guitar. So that's what this is. And then I just exported that into a DXF file so that I could import it into SOLIDWORKS. So once I had that sketch in SOLIDWORKS, I was able to use that to make a reference model for the existing part of my guitar. And then using the same sketch, I brought in the body that I had designed in Illustrator. I made the bottom of the guitar flat because I thought it would be cool if it could stand on its own. And then I went and did a bunch of fillets to smooth everything out and make it look nicer. So I rounded these bottom corners, I rounded this little edge right here. And then I also did a nice big fillet all the way around the guitar so that it would hopefully be more comfortable to hold. So I've basically got this solid block that is what I want my guitar to look like. And then I just use the shell command to hollow that all out and just turn it into three millimeter walls. And from there, I just went ahead and started cutting out the necessary holes. So the sound hole in the front. And then I also created the holes for the screws to connect the guitar, as well as this opening in the back so that I could access the screws. And then I also created the panel that will cover that hole while I'm playing. The next thing I had to do was split my guitar up into a bunch of pieces. Because my printer has a limited build volume, I had to cut up my guitar strategically in a way that I could print individual parts. So I dimensioned these parts so that they would fit in the printer and I wouldn't exceed the maximum size. And I also tried to make it so that I wouldn't have to use much support material. So most of these parts print without supports, except for a couple of the more complex ones up near the top, like this little bit right here. And then I think these two on the top had some support material too. But otherwise, they all printed free of support material, which helped reduce the amount of cleanup I'd have to do. And if I hide this part, you can see I also cut up the uh, channel where the wooden part of my guitar fits into the plastic model. And I also modeled a 0.6 millimeter thick wall to fill the sound hole so that I wouldn't need to use support material but rather I would just have this single wall that I could cut out after the fact with an X-Acto knife. I printed these a while ago, so I don't have any video of me actually printing it, 
but after many days of printing, I started assembling the parts using quick cure epoxy. So I would just cover the edges with a good amount of epoxy, but trying not to overdo it too much. And once the epoxy was dry but still tacky, I would go ahead and clean up the parts with an X-Acto knife, since it's a little easier to clean up before the epoxy is fully cured. So once I had five main parts, I started applying a filler primer to start cleaning up the gaps. And the real star of the show here is Bondo, which is usually used for car repairs, but it's just what I need to fill these pretty big gaps that I've got in all my prints. And I wanted to start doing this before I had the guitar fully assembled, just so that I could reach the inside of the parts a bit easier, and clean those up just a little bit, even though they won't really be visible. So since this guitar has a lot of large flat surfaces that I need to sand down, I decided to make some sanding blocks. So to do that, I use a piece of MDF and I cover one surface with double stick tape. I use my carpenter's knife to clean it up. And then I stick that tape onto my piece of sandpaper. And in this case, I'm starting with 120 grit paper. So now you can see I've got a really nice, super flat sanding block that will help me get really clean level surfaces as I sand. And for the more rounded parts, I just use another piece of sandpaper that I fold into thirds to give it some thickness, and then I just sand that by hand. From there on out, it's just sanding and sanding and more sanding. I'm lucky enough to have access to an air compressor so I can clean off my parts really easily. I also use hot glue to reinforce all the inside seams because I wasn't sure how strong the epoxy would hold on to these really small edges. Then I went back outside and did several more coats of filler, and then it's back to Bondo, and some more sanding. And once I had all the surfaces pretty well sanded, I decided to go ahead and finish gluing together all my parts. So I just used some more of that 5 minute epoxy, once again trying to reach in there with the hot glue gun, and also using epoxy to fill in some of the thicker gaps so that they're strong. And then it's back to sanding. Partway through I noticed there was a bit of a dip here, so I created these struts that I could put on the inside of my guitar to give it some strength and keep it flat. And then it's just back and forth between sanding and priming and bondo. Over, and over, and over again. And you'll notice I keep switching up between the colors of the filler I use. And that's so you'll notice if you're sanding too far through your primer, because you'll start seeing those colors underneath. So once things started nearing completion, I started to wet sand using a higher grit sandpaper. So I think here I'm using 600 grit. And here I am trying out my original idea for designing the guitar, which was to just freehand a design on the front. But the oil-based marker I was using ended up dissolving the primer and just ruining everything. So I had to go back through and basically sand and prime and sand and prime over and over again. And since drawing on the guitar wasn't looking so nice, my plan B was to sand through the primer on the edges of my guitar to reveal all these different colored layers that I had underneath. I figured if I did so much work and applied so many layers of primer, it would be cool to reveal that in my final design. So once the edges looked nice, I used some warm soapy water to clean up my guitar, and I also did some final wet sanding with 1200 grit sandpaper. And to finish things off, I used a glossy clear coat so that my guitar is nice and shiny. After giving the clear coat about 30 hours to dry, I was ready to assemble my guitar. So here it is in all of its glory. And here I am demonstrating how it can stand on its own, although generally, I wouldn't risk leaving it like that. So the weight is pretty good. There's a lot of primer on here, so it's heavier than your average guitar body. But you know, that's not really a problem. It actually makes it feel more uh, expensive, you know. It's got like 
some heft to it. And the sound? It's pretty good. It's got a really nice bass sound. And some clear highs. It can be a little bit twangy sometimes, but this is the first guitar I've made, so it makes sense that there's some room for improvement. Still, it's totally playable. It doesn't sound like a toy, and it's definitely one of a kind. And it's got a bit of a whammy effect, too, if you press down right here. Well, there you have it, folks. I've got my 3D printed guitar. I'm a happy camper. It was lots of toil, lots of sanding, lots of priming, but now I've got this super unique guitar. Nevertheless, it's not over. I've already got ideas for improvements on my second version of this guitar. I'll enjoy this for a while, of course, but look out for uh, another video like this sometime in the future. So make sure you subscribe, click right here, or maybe right here. And uh, also, if you want to hear some more sounds from this guitar, you can click right here, or, or maybe right here. I mean, just click somewhere and good things will happen. This is the Make Anything channel after all. Stay inspired and remember, you can make anything thanks to 3D printing. It's like we're living in the future, the future.